Hello, I'm Faisal Terry, Senior International Watch Buyer for the Watchers of Switzerland Group, and I'm joined here with Mark Tolson, Global Head of Watch Buying. Hi, Mark. Hi, Faye, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Um, today, we're going to talk about the gift of time. Um, so since the beginning of time, uh, jewellery and watches have been the most delightful gifting options for any occasion. Birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, um, for achievements in anyone's life or for own personal giftings um, or for a sentimental gift. Mm -hmm. When we gift the valuable people in our lives, we wholeheartedly express our underlying love and affection. So not too much pressure from us in terms of what we do to, for, for, for our clients to be purchasing for other people. Um, if anything, most people don't buy jewellery and gifts on a regular basis. So that alone is the reason why jewellery and watches are items that are exclusive and unique gifts that hold more emotional value than most other gifts. So we've kind of got a really nice conversation to talk about. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about why you would buy a gift, uh, yeah. a watch as a gift for somebody. And also how would you go about choosing a watch if you're gifting for somebody else, mm -hmm. um, what people would look for. So why don't we start with, um, why would you buy a watch as a gift? I think you covered a lot of ground there, which, which is great. But I mean, there's, I mean, there's the practical element of it tells the time and therefore, you know, you know when your train is or, or, or what have you. So I mean, obviously it's that, that practical thing. But, but I think you touched on, on, the, on, the, on the emotional aspect. Um, and I think that's really important because there are, if you're thinking about a birthday present, perhaps, then, um, you know, if you buy somebody a pullover, um, you wouldn't necessarily expect them to be still wearing it in 20 years time. Whereas with a watch, uh, particularly sort of, you know, a, a fine Swiss timepiece, there's that longevity aspect of it. Um, and I think, um, I, I think that that's quite a, an intimate and, and, and deep thing, um, showing your affection for somebody, um, you know, if it's your son's 18th birthday, daughter's 21st or whatever it happens to be. It's something that you, you, you intend them to wear every day, to look at every day, perhaps think of you when, when, when they're telling the time or look back in 10 years time and say, oh, my dad bought that for my 18th or, or whatever it is. So there's a whole, um, there's a whole a lot of emotion um, and, uh, and feeling you can, you can ascribe to, to, to giving somebody a watch. Um, and so I think, I, I think that's why you, you, you would give uh, the gift of time, uh, give, a, give a watch to somebody, the practical element, but also, also there's, there's um, sort of significant feelings and, and also to mark significant times in your life. So 18th, 21st, um, you know, I don't know, a, a promotion, a wedding, all, all those sort of things. And I think that plays into um, the, certainly the promotion aspect of it or, or, a, or a bonus perhaps that you've achieved can be sort of self-gifting, um, i.e., you know, I've, I've earned some money I didn't expect, so I'm going to buy that, that watch I always looked at and, and thought I'd buy if I ever had a spare X, X thousand pounds or so. So, yeah, there's two elements, self-purchase, but I, th I suppose in a way we're really concentrating on, 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 on giving something uh, to, to, to someone. Um, and I also think that um, it's a, probably a reflection on, on how you feel about that person um, and, and your understanding of, of their of their character and, and what they do and what they like. If they're a sporty person, you'd be looking to buy them a sporty watch. Or you know, if they're quite a, I don't know, casual and cool kind of guy, you'd probably buy them a, a classic watch. Or if they're if they're a girl that likes lots of glitz and glam, you'd try and push it for diamonds or something like that. You know, that's quite simplistic, but I, I guess that's really. I don't think you can go wrong. I think I'd, I'd yeah. agree with that. Um, not to say it's exclusively that diamonds mm -hmm. are, are, what, are what women want no. on a watch. Um, so it's really, it, it signifies a particular time. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I think it date stamps something as well, yeah. which, it, which it, it is relevant. So you're either looking back from the gift that was given, graduation, mm -hmm. as you said, or, 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 or birthdays. Um, but it certainly has an emotion um, in, involved in it. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so why that would be why you would buy a watch versus mm -hmm. a jumper. I would always prefer the watch. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and how do you think gifting timepieces has changed over the years? Um, I, well, depending on how far you go back, it's probably um, people got a watch when they were 18 or 21, when they, when they kind of came of age. And then um, bizarrely, they got one when they retired at 65, when, um, when, when they didn't really have to do anything to, to mark time, but they got a watch to sort of mark down their, their sort of final, final years. But I, I mean, I think there are... Um, I think the the opportunity to buy um, 
well, a Swiss watch or a, or a nice watch is, is infinitely more greater uh, these days. And also there's the whole multiple purchase aspect of it. Um, you don't necessarily have a watch for life. You know, you, you can, um, people can buy a watch to, uh, for, for lots of different occasions in, in their son's or, or, or daughter's lives or, or their wife's um, life. Um, you know, when you get married, when you have your first child, you know, when you when you when you're 18, when you, you know, when you when you uh, I don't know when you get a, a, a big promotion, uh, that that sort of thing. So, I think the accessibility of watches is greater, um, and I think people's probably it's a bit of a weird thing to say at this point in in, uh, in, in, in where we are at the moment, but I think probably people's disposable in income over recent years has been um, has has been greater uh, and allowed people to, uh, to, to, to buy more watches for, for the people they love and they care about, so uh, yeah. Um, on that point of um, sort of buying, potentially buying multiples, do you think that the first watch you would receive could potentially stimulate an interest in horology for years to come? Because at 18, I mm. probably wouldn't be massively mm -hmm. interested in watches, but it was a gift that someone was given um, or a graduation a few years yeah. later or your 21st. Do you think it can potentially open up that wonderful Pandora's box yeah. um, where you then go on to looking at, you never forget your first watch, I no, don't think. No, no. Um, and then sort of subsequent purchases that will probably ex go up in pricing um, a a along the way, just as people's careers develop and, 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 and what they earning capacity and potential. Um, I just wonder what it also means in terms of that first gifting, you, sort of, you open it up, you never forget that that moment mm. yeah I think I think you're right I think I think it can spark an interest um, in, in, in watches I mean it, obviously everybody's different and it, it uh, some people are buying into or, or appreciate watches because of the technical aspect or, or the brand aspect or, or some people just like them because there's a fashion element to it or, or there's I don't know I want to say peer peer pressure but if all your friends are, are wearing Rolex you're going to think oh probably ought to have a Rolex or, or an Odemar or, or, or something like that. So I think there's those sort of elements to it. And I, and I, I, um, I remember my, my, first, my first watch was a, was a, a Timex, an LED watch. Um, and in those days, you know, the, the LED watches were new and it had a completely black face and you pressed a button and it eliminated the, uh, the, 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 the time in, in red LEDs. Um, and it never worked and lasted about five minutes because it used to chew, they used to chew batteries, those things in the, in, in the 70s. Um, but here I am today, it sparked my interest in horology. There you go. Yeah. It was, and that was your first watch? It, what was yours? Okay. Um, would have been a Swatch watch, okay. um, yeah, which yeah. you can still, you still get today with yeah. the, sort of the plastic straps. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I remember um, my mum trying to teach me how to tell the time and it was one of these things I wore it on the wrist and mm -hmm. I still couldn't quite yeah, yeah. um couldn't 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 quite get it but mm -hmm. um um the first watch I bought myself actually was a gift to myself because okay. um I bought a, a, a Breitling Colt oh, yeah. um I um have a, I have a fear of flying and I did a did a, a big day with them and mm -hmm. there was lots of aviation sort of involved and I'd like, I'm not going to say I overcame my fear, but I was really proud of myself. So mm -hmm. I, I bought myself a pre-owned, still mm -hmm. have it to this day yeah. and, and love it. And from then on in, have had an interest in in slightly more horological watches. Yeah. But um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I'm not going to say the first watch stemmed mm -hmm. that because yeah. it was, I was, I was, I was a child, but um, um, I wasn't given the watch on my 18th or my 21st. Yeah. I mean, it's an interesting thing you mentioned about, um, about, about Swatch. Um, and I think we've talked about this in, in, in sort of recent, um, some recent podcasts and stuff that we've done um, about the Amiga Swatch um, and the Speedmaster and the acceptance uh, of, uh, of, of, well, the willingness of people to queue outside the Swatch store in Carnaby Street, at, you know, I, I think it was literally around the block for, for something like that. And, and you kind of wonder if, um, if people understood that it was supposed to look like an Amiga Speedmaster or they just liked the look of it or, there is that depth of interest from from I say younger people today that they appreciate what a Speedmaster is, and 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 that sort of marriage between Amiga and, and the Swatch in creating that that was it two hundred nine two hundred seven pound um, uh, watch that looks like it looks like a Speedmaster. Um, I don't know. It, it just seemed to spark something in people. So maybe there's a lot more watch knowledge in uh, in, in people than than perhaps I, I think there is. Well, yeah, it's a it's a good point. I certainly wasn't. I don't remember um, 
when I was younger, having either being having an awareness of, mm-hmm. of, of watches um, or my peers, mm-hmm. as we've grown up and sort of got jobs and things like that, they've always been that they, become become more relevant. But that cue that you were um, d- um, referencing, it was on the Thursday night, so two days before there were, the queues were already around there. Yeah. And I know that one of the chaps at the front of the queue was a big watch collector. Mm-hmm. Um, but he has an appreciation for watches generally. Yeah. And then there were other, there were sort of 16 year olds in the queue as well. So who wouldn't have had the disposable yeah. income mm-hmm. of, the, of the chap that was at the front. So it's interesting how as a, as a concept, it spans generations mm-hmm. and it spans um, sort of, there's, there isn't always a, it's not a, a signifier. It's not just yeah. a monetary monetary mm-hmm. signifier. So I think what they did there was very clever um, and would have been a great gift if you could get one. It would, well, yeah. Um, and, and actually thinking about it uh, in, in terms of how, how gifting may, might have, have changed over the years. Uh, I mean, 30 years ago, you might have seen the odd advert for, for watches in newspapers uh, and you'd have walked past a jeweler's shop and you never really saw watch adverts on the TV. But now you've got Instagram, you've got social posts, you've got, everybody's got a phone, everybody's got access to social media. And you, if you, you know, have a, a vague interest in something, you're bombarded with all sorts of information. Yeah. So all those people who, you know, 30 years ago, wouldn't have known what a, a Speedmaster was, it's dead easy to find anything out these days, isn't it? And I think that, that grows an appreciation amongst people of, uh, of, of, uh, of what watches can be about. And also maybe, um, you know, if you're, if you're relatively young um, you, and you, you're capturing all this stuff on, on social media for £207, you know, you've got a bit of pester power with your mum or dad, oh, I really want that watch, I really want the blue one or whatever it is, and, and you end up with a swatch, uh, an Amiga swatch, moon watch thing. Yeah, it's um, it, that's a good point in terms of how sort of what it, the impact of social media and how that's developed. I hadn't thought about that. No. As you said, thirty years ago, you'd have to go and seek it, yep. find the information you want. Now, mm-hmm. it comes at you from every angle. It certainly does. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, how would you go about gifting a timepiece? What would be the process? Do you think for anyone that wanted to buy a watch? I mean, you could start with. I mean, it. Uh, talk us through the process. It could be anything from age. What would be the first thing you'd start with? Let's... Yeah, I mean, obviously you'd know who you're buying a watch for, um, and then you have to think about um, think about what your budget is. Um, I mean, you can get a, a decent watch from from a couple of hundred pounds. You can spend several thousand or tens of thousands, uh, depending depending on on your budget. So you'd need to know uh, what you want to spend. You'd need to obviously understand the person you're buying for, um, and and and. Buy something that's 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 appropriate for what their lifestyle is. Um, so if they are a very active person, you might consider a diver's watch or a, or a chronograph or, or something like that. Or if they are, as we sort of said earlier, if they just want an everyday watch, there's there's different sorts of options. So it's an appreciation of uh, of what the person, the sort of character you're buying for. Um, and then um, I mean there is a size thing to to, to think about. Um, most um, most men don't really buy a watch that's below 36 millimeter. Um, so that's the case case diameter. Um, whereas I think for, for ladies, you can really get away with any size really. Um, and increasingly we find that, that women are buying bigger watches, watches we would have traditionally called a men's size 36 and above. Women are buying those as well, but men tend not to go the other way and buy, buy a smaller watch. So you've got to think about the wrist size and, and some some styles of watch tend to pick themselves, so divers' watches tend to be quite big. So, um, you know, you you, you 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 may struggle to find a smallish divers' watch if you're a, a relatively a relatively small wrist. Um, so, there's the size consideration, um, the, the the sort of person it is, and how you view their their character and and, and what you think they're going to use it for, and also they might have asked for something. You know, could be as simple as that. Oh, that's the easy answer, though, yeah, isn't it? Really is, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, um, so price and size, um, obviously budget's going to be really important. Mm-hmm. Do you think the brands um, cater well for, um, each brand ha- tends to have an identity to it, which is why we're familiar mm-hmm. yep. with, with mm-hmm. them. Do you think they do a, a good job in presenting a wider offer? So you can, you can, it can be a purchasing, it can be gifting, but you can equally, equally stay within that brand as well. Should it be something that you want to, that they want to maintain you as a client and maintain mm-hmm. your interest in them? Do you think the industry responds well to that? So you're not, 
I mean, you're not necessarily going to always buy a gift for somebody and it's the same brand, yeah. but do you think they offer a good variety across um, across their products? Yeah, I, mean, I, yeah I, I believe they do. I mean, Cartier is a good example where um, for, I don't know, a couple of thousand pounds, you can you can buy a, a tank must, a quartz uh, tank must, and that gets you into Cartier and, and um, they're beautifully made. You've got the excitement of this kind of the white outer and the red red box that would be would be a great present to, to open. But then beyond that relatively simple watch, you've got complicated watches, automatics, chronographs, Santos, with a whole rich history about them, um, precious metal. You know, you, you can go from a couple of thousand pounds in Cartier up to a hundred thousand pounds and beyond. Um, so that that can keep you as a as a, as a Cartier fan. Um, and I mean, there are sports brands like, for example, Panerai, who've got a very definite look. Uh, but there are within that, there are options that, that would allow you to maintain that kind of look of the Luminor or something. You know, um, the from a basic sort of three hand model to to a chronograph version. Uh, and then all the different materials they use. So there's lots of options within brands to suit every 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 price point. I, I would say. Yeah, and I think the point on um, um, something like Cartier, and I think that gifting element when mm -hmm. you if you're not expecting it, there's a real wow factor. Oh, yeah. There's a mm -hmm. real if you don't know what's in that box mm -hmm. as you as you unwrap it, it's very emotive in yeah. itself. Mm -hmm. um, it lends itself to both being. Um, brand led mm -hmm. and products. So a lot of people, you referenced Rolex earlier. If all if all, if all your mates are wearing Rolex, do you, mm -hmm. is that what you want, or do you want to steer away from it and mm -hmm. sort of yep. try, try something else? Um, I think that's one thing that's brilliant about our industry at the moment. There are so many different mm -hmm. credible brands yeah. with um, that are loyal to mm -hmm. their own DNA and their own heritage. But if you want to try something slightly different, like Nomos is a brand that I love, really mm -hmm. design led. Um, you've got Oris at a really good entry price point that. Uh, great for gifting, but not necessarily the most well known. Mm -hmm. And then you've got some of the, you know, the mega, the the, the superpowers that yeah. everybody is familiar with and mm -hmm. queuing round the block for uh, on yeah. occasion. And I think actually um, one brand that's um, one brand that's been traditionally a, a man's brand, Breitling, for example, over over what was it sort of 2019 to 2020, I think, when they started introducing more ladies' watches. They always used to make the odd ladies' watch. Um, but never really gave it much of a focus. But then the the thirty five mil Navi timers and then the thirty six mil chronomats that, that came out in, in around twenty twenty, it probably gave the 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 Breitling man something to buy his 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 girlfriend, his wife, or, or both um, <laughs> a, a, a Breitling watch that you know had the same DNA and the same history associated uh, with, with with the brand he loved, but in a smaller size and perhaps with. Um, uh, you know, some I don't know more more, more interesting dial colours than just black or, or, or silver. So, um, so I think a brand like Breitling has a, a brand like Breitling has met the the challenge of diversifying its its, uh, its, its ownership. Yeah, and they haven't just shrunk the gents' watches into no. a smaller case size and shoved some diamonds on it. No, nope, um, absolutely. As, as potentially, yeah. we saw in times gone by, mm -hmm. they are they are watches made for women. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, we've probably got a larger choice because whilst it does feel it's a bit more male dominated as a, uh, not as an industry, but as, as a product, mm -hmm. we can wear earrings, necklaces, multitude of rings. Um, yeah. It's the, probably one of the very few pieces of jewelry that a man might own. So mm -hmm. um, traditionally we've seen, you see sort of case lines of, yeah, yeah. of, of gents watches, um, but Breitling certainly raised, um, rose to that challenge. Uh -huh. um, and we've seen the sales no, we've we've seen the sales oh, yeah. through that. It's not, and it's been incremental. I don't think yeah, yeah. we've seen them come from elsewhere. But it also means if you want a, a smaller ladies' timepiece, mm -hmm. something slightly more feminine, you've got the option now. Not just necessarily a smaller case size in, in a gents, but equally, if you want to wear something that's larger, mm -hmm. and to your point, you're not going to wear a twenty-eight millimeter, mm -hmm. but I can wear yeah. a twenty-eight millimeter mm -hmm. and um, a forty. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Okay, so we have some examples of what we think can be good gifts. Mm -hmm. um, where would you like to start? I think um, we, I mean, we could start as a first watch. Um, uh, again, it comes down to budget, but you know, we, we uh, the sort of uh, the brands we stock. Um, that's you know, I don't know, fifteen hundred pounds and below. I mean, a, a good a good gent starting point for for a Swiss watch. Uh, could could be Tissot depending on your budget. I think the uh, 
the, uh, the, the, the sort of uh, the, the, the Tissot with the with a powermatic movement, 80 hours power reserve, so it's all, it's automatic. Um, 565 pounds, I think it is, with a blue dial. It's a steel watch on a bracelet, integrated bracelet. That's quite the look that people are going for. I wouldn't say it looks like an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. It doesn't, but it's it's in that kind of vein. And if that was your first watch, you could be could be proud of that as a as, as a guy. And and then for for a woman. Um, uh, well, we, we picked on a Longines. Um, we, we picked on a Longines, a classic rectangular case with Roman numerals uh, on, a, on a brown uh, leather strap, I think it is. Um, it's, uh, it's under under fifteen hundred pounds, eleven hundred pounds or so. I think those classic watches, the Longines you referenced, mm. and the Cartier earlier on, um, you're if you're if you are gifting, they're. I don't want to use the word safe with negative mm -hmm. connotation, but you can't go wrong with them because no. they're timeless, they're classic, they mm -hmm. will be in your collection. If you're going for something potentially bold and a bit more um, a bit more fashion-led, mm -hmm. it might not be something that you either will wear with a lot of things or wear yeah. frequently or be wearing in 10 years' time. Mm -hmm. But with those models, regardless of the price point, they're absolutely going to be part of a collection yep. for, for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. So yep. I think they're, they're really good. I, I think you're right about the aesthetics of the Tissot, actually. Mm -hmm. there, it's um, it's what, what it does. And if, a, if somebody, the recipient, is interested in the mechanics of it as well, mm -hmm. because it's such a big part of our industry. Yeah, yeah. It's not, you know, and that's why I think our industry is so robust because it's got a legacy to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a technical piece. Yeah. So it's just, it's the, you've got the form and the function. Mm -hmm. So you so, um, we, we've covered the Tissot and the Longines for, for ladies. If you were kind of a bit more of a sporty chap, what would, a couple of things that you'd, you'd think Ooh, about? I mean, it's literally endless now, isn't it? I mean, um, for, um, if you like chronographs, if you like racing, you, you, car racing, that sort of thing. Um, I mean, the association with Tag Heuer is um, is is really deep. You know, they were one of the um, early early automatic chronograph manufacturers. They've got an association with racing, uh, with, with car racing. The sponsor of the Red Bull uh, team, uh, and you could have a, a Formula One uh, a tag. Formula One Red Bull chronograph in quartz is about eighteen hundred pounds. Looks great. It's got the the colorways for the uh, for, for the Red Bull team on the dial. Really great watch. I say eighteen hundred pounds for a quartz chronograph from Tag Heuer. Fantastically well made. Um, or up the scale, just to pick on another one. And we kind of alluded to it earlier when we had a little bit of a swatch, um, uh, an Amiga Moon watch conversation. There is of course the Amiga Moon watch, uh, the the Speedmaster Professional. Um, that's dripping, dripping in history. You know, it's worn by first watch on the moon, um, and the, uh, the, the 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 watch that featured in the Apollo 13 movie. It's the one that's been worn by by NASA NASA astronauts from from the space program in the late 60s and early 70s, um, and it's still in production today. Mechanical chronograph, uh, just a just a, a, an iconic watch. A really, really an iconic watch. Yeah, it stands alone, that mm. piece, doesn't it? Yeah, Whether it's your gifting it for yourself or mm -hmm. for, for somebody else. And it hasn't had too many iterations. So, yeah. And I don't think there's anything wrong with, with either because the F1 that you referenced, mm -hmm. um, TAG, do change that. It's, yep. it's, it's, it's not. But I quite like that because you, you might actually be a collect, want a mm -hmm. collection of them. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing wrong with, with mm -hmm. the, the um, evolutions and the, the new iterations because mm -hmm. they're not coming away from it. It's just that the one they're launching at that time. Yeah. But the... Um, the uh, moon watch we saw an upgrade a couple yep. of years ago mm -hmm. um, and then they did it with the sapphire yep. uh, uh, case back mm -hmm. so um, yeah. Um, yeah and always bestsellers uh, that, well yeah I mean yeah. it's a, a continuous bestseller and then and then I guess uh, I mean the other part of sporty um, is perhaps uh, sort of dive watches mm -hmm. I mean uh, they're a they're a big part of what we sell. Everything you know from something that's maybe over a hundred meters water resistant with a rotating bezel. Kind of look, looks looks the part, um, and um, again we we've got uh, well actually another tag example actually the tag aqua racer um, aqua racer aqua racer uh, is it's it's a, a big part of their collection, mm -hmm. um, and as I say it's got all the functions that uh, that you, you would want from a diver's watches, um, uh, and and there's ladies' versions as well, which which is great. They just scale down like. Uh, uh, there's a 36 mil version as well in, in automatic. So you've got that diver's watch look with with the bezel. Um, so there there are two examples there, um, and and then I suppose as a, as a more um, 
out there look is Panerai uh, with the uh, with the, in the Panerai Luminor with the with the sort of crown protection on the side of the case, which is a very very distinctive look, um, and the again iconic for lots of different reasons you know the, there's, there's no other watch really that looks like a panerai no. um so that's quite a, an, an unmistakable unmistakable watch yeah panerai just whilst we've some of the others we've talked about they've got variety through their collection they there is some diversity mm -hmm. of course there is but you know you know what a submersible looks like yeah. from from them and they were the original um watches for the italian navy that's correct so yeah. again yeah. that's that goes yeah. back to that yeah. heritage and if it's something that mm -hmm. you resonate with or not necessarily being Italian or part of mm -hmm. like the Navy, but if it's if you if you want something that you can relate to, which is what I think the industry do well when they've got something mm. They really own it. Oh, well, you want um, to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger or, or Sly Stallone or all those other guys that wear them in in in, in films. So yeah, it's very very definite look. Yeah, um, and and yeah, the the, the the massive case size. I think they look great on women as well, actually. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. Um, well, they're making smaller sizes now. The thirty eights, we say smaller size, smaller sizes to what they're traditionally um, used to making. But uh, the Douai the collection, um, yeah, um, and they're even. Even doing mother of pearl dials, which uh, is, is is interesting. I know that's a bit for some people, but uh, but you can get a proper Panerai looking watch um, in a thirty eight mil case mm -hmm. size, and they are slightly aimed at, at ladies. Yeah, and speaking of variety and divers watches, if you want something bold and bright, what would you go for? Um, you could look at Doxa, relatively inexpensive, uh, you know, a couple of thousand, couple of thousand pounds. Um, they were one of the brands um, that that kind of noticed that orange was a, was a sort of last colour you could see underwater. So they're a big deal on orange dials, uh, which are, are coming quite into fashion now. Tag have done orange dial watches recently, for example. Um, I think Breitling also are coming out with some orange dials. Um, but yeah, Doxa. Um, Fine old Swiss brand with a with a kind of uh, tonneau shaped case um, and a, a rich history in divers watches. Apart from the the orange dial, they, they worked with Rolex in uh, what 1967 on the helium escape valve, which um, that's probably a video in itself. But um, but the development of the helium escape valve is is quite a big thing in in dive watches. So they're they're a great brand for that that sort of uh, dive look. So even with those three examples, we're already seeing a huge amount of variety depending mm. on your budget and yeah, your style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Functionality on the three will do the same. Technically, yep. they tell the time and you can mm -hmm. dive, yep. and yet they're all completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and ladies, gifting, what would, where would you start? Um, I mean, there, there, there are some obvious things which I might get shot for, but a Cartier with diamonds, like a Tank Francaise, uh, quartz, um, it's about sort of just over seven thousand pounds, I think it is. That's probably a winner. I, I would have thought, and I, I, you know, I, I think uh, if you if, if, if as a lady you receive that as a present um, without without trying to put myself into into too many in, into into that sort of position, I would think uh, a lady would appreciate that watch. If you want something that's um, maybe a little more chunky, we we mentioned we mentioned Breitling previously. Um, so you could have a steel and rose gold uh, Navitimer 35, steel and rose gold bracelet with a beaded rose gold bezel and a mother of pearl uh, dial with a, with, a, with some some diamonds on there as, as, a, as a perhaps a nod to femininity, but it also has a slide rule bezel, a rotating slide rule bezel, which is a which is a you know part of the point of of the of the Breitling Navitimer. So um, it's got that sort of useful functionality as well. It looks great. Well. Every female pilot needs a mother of pearl diamond or dial. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. <laughs> they're, they're great watches and yeah, um, yeah mm -hmm. they've, they've worked on the Navitimer collection this year. Mm -hmm. Chronograph at the minute, but um, um, they've, they've done that really well. Um, and I'm a fan, as I said, my first, my yep. first watch mm -hmm. was um, a cult, so always a fan of Breitling. Um, Travel always is always a good watch to give so people are particularly in this day and age where mm -hmm. you know, working on different types, you might not be traveling yourself, but you know, you might our, our roles are global. So, yeah. you know, I never really know where mm -hmm. my co what my colleagues, where my colleagues are or what they're doing. So yeah. in terms of timing, so there's a lot of options for travel as well. There are, there are. and I guess um, one of the kind of archetypes is the, is the, uh, is the blue and, and red bezel that you'd find on a, on a, on a, on a Rolex GMT. Um, the sister brand, Tudor, has a great GMT, three thousand two hundred pounds. It's got the, the red and uh, red and blue bezel. Um, it's a fantastic watch, um, a, a great travel watch. 
um, say for three thousand two hundred pounds, looks great. You can have it on a bracelet or a NATO or or, 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 a, or a leather strap. Uh, that's a really really good option. Um, and then um, some a brand that's sort of relatively new to us, um, uh, Grand Seiko. I think it's like five thousand two hundred pounds. Um, again, that's a, a different interpretation of a of a of a, of a GMT watch. Um, but you know they make some amazing watches. The Grand Seiko, the finish is uh, amazing. The polishing and the dials are really, are really, really wonderful to look at. So, I mean, there's two options there. But travel, yeah, travel watches are a great thing. Yeah, we haven't, and we haven't even touched on things like dress watches or complications. But there's a, yep. there's a lot to go. I think it's, I think it's pertinent to to talk about some of the more commercially priced points mm -hmm. because at gifting, yep. it's not necessarily going to be a watch that's. Five thousand mm -hmm. pounds, but it can, of course, would, yeah. of, of course, it can be. But um, um, it's there's a lot out there for the first time, or if you're buying for somebody that uh, uh, for a significant purchase, which is what, which is kind of what we, mm -hmm. what we've covered off. Um, and would what would your if you're buying a gift for yourself, what would you buy? Yeah. Um. I mean, it's, the list could be could be never ending, <laughs> but I would like an Amiga Speedmaster. Um, I I would like a I would like a, a, a Doxa. Um, I'd love an AP Royal Oak uh, 39 mil Jumbo, as it was as called, steel with a blue dial. Um, th there's a load. There's a load. Uh, what about you? Well, I'll tell you. Okay, um, not, that this, not that this is ever going to happen, but um, I know you, if, I, if I were buying a watch for you, it's a watch you said you'd, you'd liked in the past. It would be, um, it would actually be a bike of the Royal Oak, you steel and steel and yeah. rose Royal Oak, I think. Um, I'd take that. That would that would be a wonderful gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd be surprised if I bought it as well. As would I. Um, and yeah, I know your favourite watch was it would have been the Royal Oak with the mm. blue tapestry dial. Yeah. Um, so um, um, that yeah, well, well, it would be it would it would it would be a gift. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, and unfortunately, because people can't give the gift of time itself, I think mm -hmm. watches are a wonderful substitute yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because it's something that we never have enough of. Mm -hmm. And certainly, do we know that in our industry? Um, okay, we've got that on camera now. That you, if you were ever to buy me a gift, yeah, if <laughs> so, I was ever to buy you a gift, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, yeah. Well, yeah, that's certainly certainly up there. And unfortunately, yes, that Pandora's box has been open for me for a long time. It really in terms has. of <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, to your point, there are so many, mm -hmm. so many options that are out there. So um, I would just say to anybody that's buying a gift for somebody, have fun with it as well. Mm -hmm. Really yeah. enjoy the process. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's just that just scratches the surface of of buying gifts and and the gift of time for us at Watches of Switzerland, mm -hmm. but they can people can always come in and speak to our colleagues in any one of our stores with a wealth of knowledge, probably mm -hmm. a lot more than we have, um, and just talk through the options and like you said, think about the budget, the style, mm -hmm. um, what the the, the perp what the reason is for the significance yeah. for it, and um, everyone at Watches of Switzerland will be really happy to help. Indeed, and, and research online as well, because obviously the websites have got loads of information as well. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your time, Mark. Thank you for your time, Faye. It's a gift. <laughs>